When you think about rock and roll and you think about the road, you're thinking about a mystical, mythical place that seems like everybody in the whole world dreams about being on, but nobody really knows what it's about. Legalize it. Don't criticize it. You know what I'm saying? Those who do go down that road soon come to a realization in their life that it's the place they always knew they should be and the place they always wanted to be, even before they knew it. She loves me not. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. I believe the most thankless element of the rock roadie must truly exist within the metal world. The harbingers of the strip club and the strip pole and the true strokers of the self-ego. We're going to go to the Golden God Awards and see how much they truly love the road hero that they sing so much about. So I realized that turning up to a parade of 80s rockers wearing a legalized gay shirt could be a little close to the bone. So I switched to something a little more appropriate. Now this is supposed to be heavy metal. Is that William Shatner? Is that his toupee as well? It's William Shatner and his toupee. Would you like to see an award recognizing the meritorious achievements of the road crew? What a, look, you just gave me fucking chill bumps, oh, dude. Because that would be really cool. You know, the, the bands make it rock, but the crews make it roll. Right. Without a good road crew, you don't have a good band. I mean, that's the truth. No, that's that why, is. you know, bands like Maiden have had their same crew for like 20 years. Yeah. It'd be like Elton John going out, with, out without a toupee. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't do it. You just could. Yeah. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? They're the cowboys of the 21st century. Totally. That would be a good award. It would be a sleazy award, I would imagine. <laughs> the road crew members are what we're doing a story on. Uh, do you have any experiences with road crew uh, that you would like to tell us about? With now? road crew? Um, I don't like, you mean like the roadies and stuff? Yes. <laughs> They're more important than anything. They get up while we're sleeping. Have you ever killed any hookers and uh, used the road crew to hide the body? <laughs> no. Have you ever attempted to kill any member of a road crew, or has any member of a road crew attempted to kill you in any way, shape, or form? No, not at all. I have good security, so. Ari, Ari, Ari. Like, what? No, you know. Yeah, what the fuck is going What on? note is this? How do you feel about the road crew in general? It's fantastic. I used to be a road crew. I used to be a roadie for Anthrax before I got in the band. So I relate, brother. It's all good. There are so many guys that, that, that I could win this award. They actually work harder than the band. You know, so much respect to all those people. The band don't, 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 don't play unless there's a road crew. Road crew eats first. The road crew really is the unsung heroes of everything, man. And, you know, without them, it, this doesn't happen, you know. So we appreciate them. And we always made them part of our families, part of our home videos, and that really was our family. Well, I think we've learned that the metal gods truly love their boys of the road crew. Machismo in the Brodio goes without saying there's a little bit of a broner, and I saw a big broner in the metal scene for their road crew. But you know what? We're not getting the whole picture yet. We need to uncover the rock and let the cockroaches run free. So we've caught wind, and in our scent, is now Mr. Hickey himself. He is one of the last and a true god of the road crew scene. This man has seen it all. He's been naked with Nick Oliveri on stage and he's swapped heroin with more junkies and trannies than anybody would ever care to know. I'm gonna take y'all to see the Hickey. Now the Hickey, he's gonna leave more than a mark. My first day on the road, well, it was Megadeth and I was in Providence, Rhode Island. <clears throat> and <clears throat> near the end of the night, <sighs> They asked me if I wanted to go with them. I said, can I go home and get some clothes? And they said, no, we don't have time for that. You gotta come with us now. So I left with the clothes on my back, and then that night, I was sleeping in the back of a, a rider truck, cradling a shotgun, laying on top of Marshall cabinets. It was the ultimate life-altering decision that changed everything. I don't think I slept the whole tour. I, was, I, I absorbed everything. I did every drug for the first time on that tour. And I saw my first, like, nine guys fucking one chick and then throwing her out of the Winnebago. And, and then I had my first taste of speed and then my first taste of coke. I fucked a stripper with a broken leg in the ass in Mississauga, Ontario at the Coronet Motor Hotel. 
Hickey is a slippery snake. I had to get my grips on him outside a tattoo parlor and I ended up whipping him and his tattooist back to my place. Hickey reveals one of the uncompromising facts of the rock world. If you love it, it will twist you and leave its mark upon your body. He can't fall asleep without the rumble of a tour bus or without being wedged between two flight cases in an uncomfortable position at a midnight airport. You just wanted to go where The Rock was, see your favorite bands, and you saw, wow, if I do this, I get to be where The Rock is, right? Yep. And then next thing you know, you're in a fucking rider truck with a shotgun. Shotgun, protecting the gear. Scared out of my fucking mind. I was with one of my favorite thrash metal bands, and I was in awe because I was working with David Stain. And... and you went for it. Never looked back. Never looked back. And then it was just kind of word of mouth. I went from... Megadeth, to Celtic Frost, to Nuclear Assault, to Sam Hain, to Danzig, to Tora Tora. I just kept jumping from band to band. I did Mariah Carey, I did Madonna. I learned with Billy Joel that if the, if the red cup was in the dressing room, that meant Christie's not coming, put booze in there. But if there was a blue cup, that meant Christie's coming, there better be water in every cup. And Luther Vandross would uh, FedEx his toilet seat ahead of time. And we would have to install his toilet seat so that when Luther came in, he would sit on his toilet seat and it was, it was his. I did Lemmy from Motorhead. I got the Maker's Mark ready at the end of the night with the cigarette going. I'd hand them both. I was a glorified waiter is what I was. But man, it was the best cigarette I've ever lit. And it was the greatest drink I've ever poured. And I did it every night. And I, I was looking forward to that moment because I knew I had made it through another war day. And he didn't break a string. And he wasn't giving me that dirty look. Or he wasn't screaming about this or that. It was awesome. He was just, it was great. So I want to hear this burger story. I, uh, I make it across the border, um, I'm out of it. I've been up for three days and I'm fucking hungry and Phil, guitar player from Motorhead, tells me that there's, a, there's some burgers on the bus and I should go have one. So I go into the bus and I grab the burger off the plate and everybody's looking at me and it's just one of those moments where you're like, wait, something's not right. I, I, I go to bite and then I realize it's a patty of shit. I personally have seen people walk off the stage for far less. Sure, I've had guitars broken across my leg, I had an SG thrown at me. I've been hit with mic stands, I've been kicked. Yeah, I was just kind of caught in the line of fire. I'm the, I'm the guy. This is a calling, almost. Oh no, I do, I, it, anything for the, the show, dude. Anything for the show, because every show that I went to, some guy put it on, and that show changed my life. So I'm hoping that the show that I helped put on changes some other kid's life, and then he's the next Lemmy or the next Josh, or the next Nick, or whoever. Like, that sums it up right there. But would you recommend this? And if you would, who would you recommend it to, and what would you recommend? I'm not here to tell anybody what to do, because I didn't want anybody telling me what to do, but it's a lot of fun, man. It's a great fucking existence. I got to see some really great shows. I got to meet a lot of cool people. Uh, I got to fuck a lot of amazing chicks that normally wouldn't even serve me dinner. So. Any regrets? Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, herpes. Um, herpes. That's it. There's a phrase often said that if you can't do the crime, do not do the time. Rock and roll is a beautiful and amazing vicious animal, but it takes no prisoners and it will leave its mark upon you. It's definitely not for those who want to leave the disciples' life of Christ, and it's certainly not for people trying to save whales or stop global warming. In order to be alive in the belly of the whale, you have to be just as mean, if not meaner. Oh, that's, <laughs> that feels fine. <laughs> I just really miss my mom right now, it's simultaneously, just coincidentally, at the same time that this tattoo is happening. You know, and I'm just thinking about like AIDS and cancer. It just makes me sad.